Wonderful. Thanks very much. Most people, at some point in their life, will take medicines. Some people will take a lot of medicines during a very short time. And there are people who have got to take medicines for every day for the rest of their lives. We take medicines to get better. We take medicines to, pre uh, to prevent ailments. And we use medicines to make it easier to live with, an, with a disease. Most medicines in Europe are sold in small cardboard boxes. I've got some examples here. And these are the boxes that my father got from his pharmacy a few weeks ago. My father is now 84 years old, and he asked me to help him with his medicines. He's absolutely bright, and all of these medicines are preventive. He's got no disease whatsoever at all. But the outside of these boxes do not really tell us anything about the medicine. It does not state what the medicine is for. It doesn't help you how to take it. It doesn't tell you how much to take. So in every European country, a pharmacist will help you with these medicines. A pharmacist will write something on the box, or a pharmacist will print out a leaflet or a label and put that on top of the box. And they look like this. On the left-hand side is a handwritten text. On the right-hand side is an example of a printed label that is stuck onto the outside of the box. Alas, the handwriting is very hard to read, and the label covers most of the information, the important information that's printed on the box. And although there are many problems with these medical boxes in Europe at the moment, I would like to focus on the leaflets that are inside every box. My father got five of these leaflets when he took the medicines last week. And I'll show you what happened. He opened the first one. He opened the second one. He opened, I'm really sorry, I've got to put them on here. Um, he opened the third one. And both sides. This is all one language, of course. In Belgium, my father lives in the Netherlands. I live in Belgium. In Belgium, these are three times as long because we use three languages. So my father got these, these leaflets, five of them. And they look like this. Um, is this the correct slide at the moment? Yeah, perfect. Um, they're very large sheets of paper, very thin, printed in black type on both sides only. They're folded many, many times. They uh, do not contain any color, and they don't tell you where to start reading. Do you really have to read all this information first before you start using the medicines? And I think, if you think that that's an exaggeration, and my father is just a unique case, he is, but... I do make uh, interview uh, patients at their homes and I talk about their medicines and I make photographs of the ki their kitchen tables and their coffee tables. And this is a coffee table of a lady, 25 years old, who's got a very severe asthma and she needs to use nebulizers in the morning and inhalers in the morning and then she goes to work, takes all these medicines with her in a special bag and when she gets an attack or when she's triggered by some sort of whatever thing, uh, she has to take those medicines. And when she takes her medicines correctly, she feels fantastic and she runs half marathons. Absolutely amazing girl. When she fails to take the medicines correctly, she ends up in hospital. But I would like to talk about these leaflets. I did a PhD myself about 30 years ago about these leaflets to try to find out what patients, what kind of information patients actually need. And I keep asking myself the same question for the last decades. Why are these leaflets in these boxes? And do they really help patients for all types of medicines, for all diseases, all across Europe, in all languages? So let's have a look at the contents of some of them. I take a simple painkiller as an example. Most of you will have taken ibuprofen to get rid of a headache or get rid of some, when you feel not too well and get some flu-like symptoms or a fever. Um, in this box, on this slide, you have the box, you have the, the, package le the, the blister pack, and you've got the package leaflet. And most people will just press out two tablets, swallow them with a bit of water, and they will feel better in half an hour. The medicine is actually very effective. But my question is, is that leaflet effective? Does it actually work? And I have a quick look at the text of that leaflet. Every medicine can cause side effects. Those are the effects that our body uh, our reactions of our body that we can have with every medicine. And no, no patient reacts in the same way. So there's two lists of side effects actually in this leaflet. On the left-hand side, we have the very serious side effects. And if those happen, go to the doctor immediately. They're very serious. But on the, the right-hand side, 
you have at the top column um, the less serious side effects. And if they bother you, you have to talk to a pharmacist. And to my surprise, I read that kidney failure, meningitis, heart attack and stroke <laughs> are classified as less serious side effects. So if your meningitis or your heart attack bothers you, the advice is to go, to a pharma go and talk to a pharmacist. And I find that odd. If I have a heart attack, I really hope that there's a doctor somewhere to help me as quickly as possible. This is ibuprofen, 200 milligrams. It can be bought in supermarkets and petrol stations and chemists. It is really is considered to be a safe medicine that everybody can use without a prescription. If it take a slightly more um, serious side of serious uh, medicine, like ibuprofen, 600 milligrams, three times the strength of these, these, this, this leaflet. Um, the leaflet looks like this. On the left-hand side, you've got the, long, the, the front. In the middle, you have the back. And I've enlarged the uh, section of the, the side effects. And on the top, le top left, you can actually see that it is about ibuprofen, 600 milligrams. And because the, leaflet, the strength of the medicine is a lot stronger, of course, uh, the leaflet is a lot longer as well. But if you start reading the information on the leaflet about side effects, it actually states, like all medicine, this medicine can cause side effects, although not everybody gets them. That is really reassuring. And it's a standard sentence that appears in every medicine leaflet. The third paragraph states, the most commonly observed side effects are gastrointestinal in nature. How did you mean? Observed side effects. I get them. I don't observe them. I'm not a doctor. I'm a, I'm a patient. I get these side effects, I don't observe it. And what do they mean in nature? I've got no idea. Um, the text continues. Um, peptic ulcers, perforation or gastrointestinal bleeding, sometimes fatal, particularly in the elderly, may occur. <laughs> fatal? So this stuff might actually kill you? If you take three tablets of the 200 milligrams that um, you, you have, for, um, then it actually kills you? And, and what do they mean by elderly? Um, so, so does an elderly, is, is that 45 years old or 65 or 75, 85? What, what is elderly? And if you are elderly, what should you do? Um, take it and, and be killed? Um, and then the, the text continues. Um, um, the text continues and now it becomes really poetic. Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, flatulence, constipation, indigestion. Abdominal pain, melina, hematomasis, ulcerative stomatitis, exacerbation of colitis and Crohn's disease have been uh, reported following administration. Of course, following administration. <laughs> that means after taking the tablets. And who the, how did it mean have been reported? Shouldn't that just say you might get any of these? I've shown you now two tablets, or two medicine leaflets about ibuprofen. Both were very poorly written and both were very confusing. The information in both leaflets about the same medicine differs greatly. None, oh sorry, nearly all of those leaflets are that bad. I've collected thousands of these leaflets in the last 30 years and all of them are this bad. And to prove that, try to read one yourself. Really do that. But why are these texts this poor? Who wrote them and who approved them? And to answer that question, we have to go to the ways that medicines are regulated in Europe. If a company wants to produce a medicine or sell a medicine, you need a license. And that license can only be obtained from the European Medicines Agency or from a local national agency that's usually part of the Ministry of Health. And these medicine agencies are incredibly good. We should be really proud to have these agencies because they protect us from bad medicines. They do not allow any medicine that has got no benefits onto the European market. And they check the risks and benefits and make absolutely sure that medic medicines are effective. And that means that if you can go, if you go anywhere in Europe to a pharmacy and you buy, it, buy a medicine, it's guaranteed that it is effective. And that's absolutely fantastic. However, these agencies are not so good in checking the information that goes with medicines. These agencies don't have the time, nor the people, nor the funding, nor the training, nor the tools to do that. However, they are obliged to check that. The European legislation very clearly states that the package leaflet must be written and designed to be clear and understandable, enabling the users to act appropriately when necessary with the help of health professionals. 
European medicines agencies should check that. None of these leaflets that my father has received, none of the leaflets that the asthma patient has received, none of the, patient, the leaflets that I've collected over the last 30 years adheres to this legislation. They are illegal. They're not clear and understandable, and they don't enable users to act appropriately. And that worries me, because I can't help my father taking his medicines. The printed information on the packaging, the information that was handwritten by the pharmacist and stuck onto the label and stuck onto the outer box, the packaged leaflets, all of that stuff together, do not help me to give my father advice how to take his medicines. And I'm probably not the only one in Europe. I'll give you some figures. In Europe, more than 21% of the, patient, of the citizens, of the people who live in Europe, are older than 65 years old. And that's the group that takes medicines. In this, and this group is increasing. We get more elderly, and the elderly are getting older. And we start taking preventive medicines younger and younger and younger. So the age of 65 is a fairly arbitrary age when people retire. But people start taking medicines at 55, 45, 35 even, to prevent, prevent diseases coming on. So the group of people that take medicines is increasing all the time. About 20% of any population has got severe difficulties reading any text. These people cannot read the newspaper, struggle with the newspaper, they struggle with the captions on television, and they certainly cannot read any of this. 20% has got problems called functional literacy. About 50% of the people uh, struggle with information about their health. Health literacy is very low. And if I ask you, how many livers do you have? One. How many kidneys? Two. Um, you have a pancreas. Can you tell me the relation between the pancreas, the liver and the kidneys? That's what's called health, li health literacy. You need to be able to explain that in order to understand what's happening. Can you point out where your pancreas is, please? Um, about, so 50% struggles with information about their health. 50% of the medicines for chronic diseases is not taken correctly. That means that people do not take the medicines optimally effective. That means, in practice, that, 50, that on Monday we produce for patients, on Tuesday we throw the whole production away, on Wednesday we produce for patients, and on Thursday the whole production goes into landfill and bins. That's what 50% uh, uh, compliance means for chronic medicines. At the moment, in Europe, about one person per million per day dies because of poor medicine use, overdose, underdose, wrong administration, interactions. In Switzerland, with 8.7 people, 8 .7 million people, eight or nine people will die today, have died today, because of poor medicine use. That's 14 times as much as in traffic. And the last point is, in Europe, we produce between 5 and 15 billion of these leaflets every year. 5 and 15 billion. And most of them are disappear into the bin immediately. This is simply unsustainable. But the worst thing is that patients do not get information when they really, really need it. This is all the information a woman with breast cancer gets when she receives her chemotherapy. A sticky label on top of a, of a um, infusion bag and some handwritten scribbles below it. You can't even find out the name of the medicine. So despite of all the good care that patients receive in hospitals and in clinics, the information that people, the medicine, that people get about their medicines is below any standard. And that brings me to the main point of this talk. How can we give patients usable information about their medicines? We know how not to do it. The European system at the moment has developed over the last 30 years an expensive, useless, unsustainable and embarrassingly poor system that does not help patients. And I'm not the one who's saying this. There are about 400 articles published in scientific academic journals in the last 30 years. Not a single one of these 400 studies has been able to point out to a single benefit of these package leaflets. Not a single benefit in 400 studies. Please prove me wrong. There's absolutely no evidence that these leaflets help patients. So what could we do about it? In the first place, of course, we should make it as easy as possible for patients to take their medicines. We need to design information that is actually helpful. And that means that it needs to be relevant, findable, understandable and usable. And that is absolutely critical because we are not the ones to judge that. The only person in the world who can judge if information is relevant, 
findable, understandable and usable is a patient. So let's not start blaming people that they get older and need to take more medicines. Let's not start people that they have difficulties reading. Let's not blame people that they cannot combine diff different medicines at the same time and struggle to take them. Those differences are the standard for design processes. That's the basis to start from. Information for patients must be accessible and in inclusive. At the moment, it's not accessible and, it's not and it excludes many people. The good thing is that the European legislation that makes these leaflets obligatory is changing at the moment. It's being revised. The last re uh, version of the re revision was published last week. Alas, information for patients was not reconsidered. It is therefore likely that we will be looking at these leaflets, these useless leaflets, for the next three or four decades. But only one simple requirement can change in the legislation. And it's if we really want to make sure that patients get information that's usable, and if we really want to enable people to act appropriately, it's very simple. We really need to listen to patients before we start. And I think that that is an idea worth spreading. Thank you.